Good evening everyone. Myself Dr. Pradyut, Director of Movement Maestro Academy. Welcome you all to our 6th e-seminar of Movement Maestro Academy on the topic of role of physiotherapist on muscular dystrophy. For today's session, we have our renowned physiotherapist from Nimhans, Dr. Kartikeyan sir. Over to you sir. Yes. Thank you so much for your introduction. The director of Movement Maestro Academy given the greatest opportunity to share my experience with the population of uh, muscular dystrophy conditions. What is the role of physical therapy? That how to manage therapeutic intervention approach we are going to discuss right now. Sir, is it visible? Pratyo, sir? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the Movement Master Academy given the opportunity to share my experience with a Tochi muscular dystrophy survivor. So, what is the physical therapy role in the area of muscular dystrophy, how to manage in physical therapy intervention approach, how we can deal with the patients of muscular dystrophy conditions. There was here various types of muscular dystrophy we used to see in our hospital. Before that, how the system which is working at demands. When somebody coming with the symptom of muscular dystrophy, they should reach our hospital. There is a screening. Some of the medical doctors, they will evaluate, followed by if the condition related to neurology, then they will refer to neurologist. If the condition is relevant to surgical intervention approach, they refer to neurosurgeon, if the condition related to psychosomatic or psychiatric symptom, they refer to concerned psychiatrist. So the, we have six days OPD, rotational basis, some of the professor and senior consultant, they working as a head of the, that particular area. And in demands we have, there is a special clinic which is operated by one of the expert neuromuscular expertise. The, uh, the, uh, the, the expert name is Dr. Nalini Madam. She, is, uh, she has undergone some of the fellowship and she earned a degree in the area of muscular dystrophy. She is the head of the muscular dystrophy clinic. So in, in her uh, supervision, there was a team which is working for the management of the muscular dystrophy. The management, the expertise, physiatrist is there, physiotherapist is there, occupational therapist is there, orthotist is there, then speech pathologist is there, psychologist is there, then social worker. There was a comprehensive care is required to manage the muscular dystrophy. Now we come to what is the role of physical therapy? Physical therapy means it is a systematic method of assisting cardiorespiratory, musculoskeletal, neurological, including pain and psychosomatic disease to prevent illness by the way of manual therapy and physical ability. So what is the interrelation? We are the, the physical therapist also called us exercise specialist. They also called us movement specialist. When they are working depends upon the area, they are used to call as expertise. So the muscular dystrophy means it is an autosomal dominant disorder. The muscular dystrophy are characterized by progressive skeletal muscle weakness. There was a defect in the muscle protein and the depth of the muscle cell and tissues we can able to identify through gene test. The French neurologist who identified this disease, that's why this disease name is Tochin muscular dystrophy. The second slide, 
am going to describe what the clinical symptom which we use to see our clinical practice. One is the progressive muscle wasting which occur in the upper extremity and lower extremity, mainly the proximal muscle which get weakness and wasting. Then the balance. There was a balance disorder. Then the muscle atrophy we can able to see. Then we come to the spine. The spine mainly there was a deformity which is developed. That deformity name is scoliosis. Curvature of the spine and the back of back. Then the patient inability to walk. Then frequent falls. Then cough deformation. Then the movement get reduced. Then respiratory insufficiency. Then muscle spasm. Then cover sign. Physically, we can identify one of the sign. The sign name is cover sign. The cover sign is positive. Then the 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 child he possesses muscular dystrophy. The muscular dystrophy when it will be occur when you compare with the gender both gender the male having more prominent than the female children. At the age of three to thirteen or fourteen years, we can able to quantify. Their natural, their functional ability deterioration slowly it will start. So the mainly it start from the the entire body first in the neck flexors which is involved the neck flexors, then lower extremity then lower extremity you can able to hip knee ankle in hip joint. There was a hip extensor muscle weakness, then hip abductor weakness, then adductor weakness, then calf muscle hypertrophy. Then finally, the patient, the type of walking will be modified. So that is called as waddling type of gait. So the gait means gait is a rhythmic alteration of movement in both upper limb and lower limb. Then the patient used to walk with the toe walking. So the waddling type of the gait, being a physical therapist, we are the movement expert to correct the gait. So there was here some protocol we used to follow to correct the gait. Specifically, we can identify to identify this disease. There was here one test is that the test name is called Gover sign. The Gover sign, the patient is kneeling then four point kneeling then the patient when the when the patient lying position prone lying ask the patient to sit the patient using some of the upper extremity and lower extremity using and they can able to stand so how they are four point kneeling followed by they have to raise the hip then they will use to stand up by the help of, they are holding the knee joint to get up. This position, if they are reaching from the supine to standing, then the test is positive. We call this Gover sign. The next slide I am describe about what are all the etiological or causes of the muscular dystrophy. Muscular dystrophy is genetically inherited. There is a mutant and a genetic disorder. However, mutant of the dystrophy gene and the nutritional deficit are responsible for the disease. The main cause of the disease is due to lack of muscle protein. There was a protein which helped to stable, this, uh, stable the muscles. The protein, if it is getting abnormal, then it leads to develop some of the, uh, some of the muscular disease that is called as muscular touching muscular dystrophy. Then there was a type of muscular dystrophy. I simply classified B stand for Becker's muscular dystrophy, C stand for congenital muscular dystrophy, D stand for Tucci muscular dystrophy, E stand for Emery diffuse muscular dystrophy, F stand for facio scapular humeral muscular dystrophy, then myotonic muscular dystrophy then distal muscular dystrophy. So these are all the type 
we can classify the type of MOSFET dystrophy. The diagnosis either physically being a physiatrist, being a physical therapist, both they have used one tool to identify that is called Gower sign. So when we ask the patient to prone to st standing, how the patient is standing position is coming, they have to go for four point kneeling followed by the hip raise four point kneeling. Then they will use their own extremity, upper extremity, then they help by the help of upper extremity, they try to come to standing. So you can easily identify the person having the cover sign. Then the, uh, he, he possesses this disease or the diagnosis which is confirmed by uh, muscular dystrophy. Then other medical diagnostic tool which we use, one is the creatine phosphokinase level increased. Then we can identify or quantify through electromyography, then electrocardiography, then DNA, there is gene. Gene identification test is there. So in treatment aspect, in treatment aspect, I already told you there was a comprehensive care. The first management, which is taking care of neuromuscular expertise. The neuromuscular expertise, he will identify and he will confirm this disease. Then he referred to concerned expertise. One is he referred to physiatrist, then followed by physical therapist, occupational therapist, orthotist and prosthetist, then some of the psychologist, then social worker. The, he referred to concerned area to manage, to manage, minimize the symptom and maximize the overall goal to minimize the symptom and maximize the function. So then medical management, either neurologist or neuromuscular expertise, including orthopedic surgeon, because some scoliosis will be there, the scoliosis which is corrected through orthopedic surgeon. So his role also will help to minimize the symptom and maximize the function. In twitching muscular dystrophy, there was a medical care. So the medical management, steroids will help to minimize the symptom and restore the function. So some of the steroid, we, which we called as phenyl phenytoin, procainomide, quinine. These are all the drugs which will help to minimize the symptom. Then the recent evidence is gene transplantation. To remove the gene and reinsert, some of the research is going on. Still, there was no evidence not yet come. It is under investigation. Then physical therapy. I already told physiotherapy means we are the movement expert. We make the patient to walk independent. The main goal to make the patient to walk independent, to correct his gait, to correct his balance, to correct his posture, to correct his functional ability, to improve the functional capacity. That is the technique which we used. So assessment purpose, we called as SOAP, subjective. SOAP means S stands for subjective, O stands for objective, a stand for assessment and P stand for planning of the treatment. So physical therapy, what are all the things we are taking care of the muscular. So when the muscles, so MMT, we need to assess upper extremity, then lower extremity. There is MMT, one scale is there, Medical Research Council. So they classify into five categories, zero, no muscle contraction, one is flicker of contraction, two is full range of movement with equalizing gravity, full range of movement with the against gravity, against gravity with the resistance is four, fifth one is normal. On the basis of muscle muscular impairment, we quantify, then we can prescribe some of the protocol. If the patient is completely bedridden, then he need passive range of motion. If the partially the patient is so active assisted, some Little more strength is there than assisted, resisted, then some strengthening exercise, which will help to improve the strengthening and improve the flexibility of the muscles. So, the, the, I already told you, wandling gait. 
So the gait is a rhythmic alteration of movement in both upper limb and lower limb. So the patient having with after five years, he may develop some of the gait impairment. The gait impairment, when you see from the upper extremity, lower extremity, the next should be flexors. Then shoulder abductors, weakness. The weakness will be in shoulder abductors, elevator, productors, then shoulder flexors. This is a weakness of the uh, touching muscle dystrophy. Then lower extremity, hip extensor, hip abductors, and adductor weakness will be there. The patient dorsal flexors weakness will be there. So foot drop will be there. So we need to quantify the functional ability. So before that, if the deformity is developed, then to correct the deformity, if the spine, abnormal spine, especially some of the uh, spinal deformities that we can correct it through spinal brace. Then the shoulder and the lower extremity, the lower extremity we can correct it through one device which we called as HKAFO. H stands for hip, K stands for knee, A stands for ankle, then foot orthosis. This will help to give the complete strength to the lower extremity and it will correct the gait of the waddling type of the gait, it will correct it through these braces. Then some of the breathing exercise. So sometimes the heart also influence, then cardiomyopathy will be there. So the cardiologist will take care. Then some respiratory complication, which is managed through some of the exercise protocol. What are all the exercise? The mainly on device we call as incentive spirometer, then deep breathing exercise, then putigo breathing exercise. These are all the exercise which will help to restore and restore the respiratory function as well as it will help to minimize the symptom and maximize the respiratory complication and minimize the symptom and maximize the function of the respiratory system. Then there was a so the mainly upper lordosis will be more. Then the, when you observe in the heel, there was a lack of heel strike. The person with the DMD, he may have lack of heel strike. Then increased hip flexion during the swing when the person is walking. So the gait, gait is a rhythmic alteration of mood in both upper limb and lower limb. Heel strike of one leg to subsequent heel strike of same leg. Then uh, number of steps taken per minute is called as cadence. The foot may be pronated and averted. Cadence also will be decreased. Then transitional stage. Progression of the muscle listed in the early stage with more marked increased weakness in quadriceps and ankle flexors. Being a physical therapist in lower extremity, the affected muscles mainly it occur in the quadriceps and the ankle avatars. You can able to quantify there was a changes in the quadriceps and the ankle avatars. The basic support widen, more increased fall, they tend to fall. Another things, knee buggling will be there. So that will be corrected through HKAFO, which, which will help to stabilize the knee joint. Then tightness, iliotibial band, hip flexors, hamstrings, gastrosoleus, posterior tibialis. Functional losers, inability of elevation against gravity, inability to raise from the floor, unable to, we, when we ask the children, ask the children to climb from the floor to get up. They will use holding the knee and get up inability to start climbing, difficult raising from the chair because they have the weak in the hip extensor. When the hip extensor get weakness, they are unable to get up. So they need support to get up. 
So being a physical therapist, we need to quantify where is the muscle problem is there. To identify that area, we need to focus and we need to strengthen that particular muscles. Once the muscles get stabilized, then we are able to. So there was a lack of protein. It is a genetic disorder, right? Then non-ambulatory. When the person, when the child, we classify it into the, when the child is trying to walk. Generally, being a physical therapist, we classify it into two categories. At the time of walking, one is ambulatory, another one is non-ambulatory. Sometimes the, the core issues, the patient is completely wheelchair. Sometimes the child may be develop some of the strengthening, then the, their ambulatory skin, but their speed will be reduced. So upper limb weakness become the prominent. In this condition, mainly weakness and the wasting of the muscles, which we can able to quantify. Elbow extension weaker than the elbow flexion. If you compare with the elbow extension, especially upper extremity, elbow extension is much weaker than the elbow flexion. Then come to forearm. Forearm supination is much weaker than the forearm pronation. Then when you come to wrist, the wrist finger extension weaker than the finger flexion. Scoliosis is seen in the spine, especially posterior pelvic tilt. So we have to teach. So mainly extensor weakness will be in the upper extremity that we can be able to correct it. Then respiratory insufficiency, we have to use some of the devices that is sent to spirometer, which will help to minimize the symptom and maximize the function of the respiration and improve the lung expansion and the chest wall mobility. These are all the things which will help by deep breathing exercise, then pranayama, then some of the Putigo breathing exercise, which will help to improve the, resp improve the respiratory functions. Then cardiac muscles. Cardiac muscle generally dystrophy. Dystrophy means lack of protein occur in the muscles. So the muscle wasting and weakness is the next stage of this disease. This will be taking care of cardiac involvement. This will be taking care of cardiologist. They will take care. Then goals of the physical therapy. Long, we classify it into two categories. One is long-term management and the short-term management. Long-term management, the patient is completely wheelchair bounded. If they have respiratory insufficiency, they, their ambulatory skill completely deteriorated. How to manage being a physical therapist or human expertise to prevent the deformity we have to use appropriate devices that is AFO or HKFO, then some of the sling which will help to minimize the deformity. The second goal is to maximize to maintain the strength of the muscles. So according to MMD classification, I already told zero no muscle contraction. If the condition no muscle contraction, then we have to use the electrical stimulation which will help to stimulate the muscles to restore the muscle fiber function. So electrical stimulation, which will help to zero to one level, it will help to strengthen the muscles from zero, no muscle contraction. One is stand for flicker of contraction. Two is stand for full range of movements with against gravity, equalizing gravity, equalizing against gravity, third, against gravity with resistance, fourth one, fifth one is normal condition. Then short-term goals. This is a long-term, the wheels are bounded. The patient ambulatory skill is there. They have less respiratory insufficiency. We can manage and we can assess and we can manage through physiotherapy skills to increase or maintain range of motion, to increase or maintain strength and endurance to promote optimal body alignment, to maintain sitting ability, to strengthen or maintain respiratory muscle endurance, 
to establish and monitor home program to promote relaxation and comfort so there was a relaxation exercise that is called as jacobson pm progressive muscle relaxation it will help to give the complete relaxation to the body so that is called as progressive muscular pm progressive muscle relaxation then biofeedback autogenic training these are all the exercise will help will help to make the patient in relaxed position then next slide being a physical therapist or movement expertise we need we have the capacity to assess one is range of motion another one is manual muscle testing then respiratory insufficiency which we can assess through the vital capacity through spirometer what type of breathing pattern we can assess the fourth thing is gait deviation balance deviation posture then what are all the orthotic appliances whether the patient is needed hkl or not what is the patient's functional capacity functional ability the patient uh, how long duration the patient is walking through stop watch we ask the patient to walk 10 meter how much distance the patient is walking 6 minute if you given within the 6 minute how much distance the patient is crossed during the task that we can able to quantify 6 minute walk test then ask the patient from the lying to standing how much duration it takes especially dmd children we make the patient to ask the patient to stair climbing during the time duration can be assessed then pt management we classified into three categories one is early stage transitional stage the last one is residual paralysis stage the early stage what are all the support the patient is required one is we have to educate the patients this is a genetic disorder we call the patients kin and thin parents g to evaluate the gene is is taking care of other children or not so this is not a communicable disease so we have to give the concrete support to about the gene test another one is already he developed some of the deformity how to prevent it so how to prevent it that is the main role the patient positioning is very important to prevent the pressure sores and uh, secondary orthotic appliances the orthotic appliances suitable appliances we have to identify only ankle joint developed some of the deformity then the patient the child is required for a4 along with uh, if they developed the knee hip everything is involved then the patient is advised to go for hip knee ankle foot orthosis another things i already told you some of the electrical stimulation then some of the uh, electrical stimulation some of the active assisted resisted exercise strengthening assisted resisted exercise all the exercises will help to minimize the symptom and maximizing function of the muscles then we have to the patient uh, independently walking then we make the patient to quantify one scale is the functional mobility scale the functional mobility scale will identify clinically the the uh, there was a six classification is there one stand for the wheelchair bounded the second stand for they are using some of the external device some of the external device like walker they used to stand with the four point so that is second third one is they are using with the elbow elbow cutter the fourth one is stick fifth one is standing sixth one is walking these are all the clinical the patient prognosis we can quantify when the patient comes to our department we can easily quantify what is the status one is stand for the patient is wheelchair bounded second one is stand for the patient using walker third one is is standing for elbow cutter 
Fourth one is he is using the stick. Fifth one is standing without anybody support. Sixth one is the patient able to walk independently. So on the basis we can clinically this scale which will help to identify. The next slide I already told you there was a stretching protocol, closed kinetic chain, open kinetic chain. Then some of the braces. With the braces we can quantify. We ask the patient to walk. Uh, six minutes. During the six minute, how much distance he covered? So we can quantify. Then we have to modify the treatment protocol. Then PNF technique. The technique name is proprioceptive pro pro neuromuscular facilitation. Then myofascial release technique. If the pain is persisting, then we can advise the patient to go for must heat. The position is very important which is appropriate to position. We should not allow the patient to lying on one single place. We make the patient to turn right lateral, left lateral, prone, depends upon the patient's capacity. And we have to use the positioning we are using, some of the pillow, some of the foot, foot splint, which will help to minimizing this, uh, to prevent the deformity. To prevent the ulcers, skin ulcers, pressure sores. Then transitional stage, then some of the hydrotherapy. We have to advise the patient, ask the patient to walk stair climbing. The patient should not come down. When the patient, when the child is asking to walk stair climbing up, not for stair climbing down. Then the deformity is developed and HKAF will, will reduce the deformity. Then spinal brace to correct the scoliosis. So these braces which will help to, this called us, it will cover from the hip to ankle to prevent the deformity of DMD children. This spinal brace which will help to prevent the scoliosis deformity. The respiratory insufficiency, we have to use the spirometer to improve the lung capacity and deep breathing exercise, then putigo breathing exercise, pranayam for yoga, all will help to improve the respiratory functions. Then surgery, there was a spinal surgery, segmental stabilization, which will help to restore the spinal, especially to correct the scoliosis. Then come to our physical therapy point of view. There was a research outcome which will help to identify the prognosis. One is six minute walk test. We ask the patient to sit in the chair. We have to use the stopwatch. During the six minute, how much distance the child was covered? This is a at the time of admission, if the patient ovulatory skill is good, then we have to give some of the exercise protocol. One is, depends upon the uh, MMT. One is, we can give the patient for electrical stimulation. Then with, with the help of braces, like HKFO, without braces, both we can come back. This is one of the unique outcome to assess the functional ability of the DMD children. Another important outcome is we call this NSA squared, North Star Ambulatory Assessment. This is the significant tool to assess the ambulatory skill, especially lower extremity. Then pull performance of upper limb then another time taken to raise from the floor. Then we ask the patient to sitting to standing, how much duration the, uh, the child was taken. Ask the patient to start climbing, how much duration the child was taken that we are going to. So these are all the main things which we discussed, especially touching muscular dystrophy.
so this is a very unique area to deliver our skill to improve our skill lot of research work which is going on this kind of patient is required especially comprehensive care to manage this is a unique protocol which i prepared and i got the experience from the dmd children that i have shared with this video i really are and i my sincere thanks the movement maestro academy who given the greatest opportunity to share my knowledge and experience with the dmd children so my sincere thanks to movement maestro academy director and his team hope you can understand the way of treat treatment so this is a very short span of time the sar was given the time to deliver my lecture i hope you can understand if you feel any kind of specific protocol there was a various modalities or various devices which is available especially the medical uh, the gene test to identify the disease and physically being a physical therapist we can be able to quantify that is called as gover sign another things in nimans we have one specialized machine that machine name is gait right system how the gait changes especially heel strike foot flat mid stance heel off acceleration mid swing deceleration that will exactly quantify through machines because the sensor is connected with the foot plate we ask the patient to walk at the time of admission then the physiotherapy protocol continued one month at the end we can re evaluate how much the progress improvement or prognosis happening in the dmd children we can quantify especially in gait and we have the body weight support treadmill system then we have the dst dynamic stair trainer this will help to adjust your racing on the foot especially how much you are able to lift this will help to adjust your foot steps especially the steps will adjust by the dst so the electrical stimulation so some of the comprehensive it's not only for physical therapy some of the comprehensive care is required to manage the dmd survivor the comprehensive care consists of neuromuscular expertise then physiatrist orthopedic surgeon physical therapist occupation therapist orthotic speech pathologist and audiologist and social worker and psychologist the entire has the team has to work to minimize the symptom and maximize the function of the this dmd survivor thank you so much sir hello yes sir sir thanks a lot for sharing your valuable knowledge and experience on your practice yes sir definitely this will gonna help a lots of professionals and students in future yes. for their uh, in their yes. practice of patients uh, thanks a lot sir yes and, there, uh, thank thanks a lot sir if anybody having any doubt kindly ping me i prepare to answer the any questions and answers yes sir. thank you so yes, much sir. for given the opportunity sir definitely. thank you all the participants okay, we are open we are completely open any time you can ask any doubts and any helps from us on your yes. practice on your knowledge Okay thank yes, you sir. everyone thank you so much sir for sharing your valuable knowledge good night good, good night sir thank you